Hey everybody, this is Brent, your host of the LGS Podcast. Welcome to the show. You're listening to episode number 17, where today I'm going to be talking about eight jazz records you need to listen to. Eight jazz records you need to listen to. I'm so glad you're here to join me, and I hope you enjoy listening to this episode. Uh, But before we dive in, I just want to say that if you get value out of today's podcast, then consider adding value back. This podcast is 100% funded and produced by listeners like you. So if you enjoy what you're listening to, if you get something out of it, go and press the support button. If you're on the website and click the support button, leave us a one-time or monthly donation. And if you're not on the website right now, you can go to Learn Jazz Standards dot com slash support we appreciate your support in funding this podcast okay so for today's episode i'm talking about eight jazz records you need to listen to and these are really just some of my favorite jazz records these are some of the jazz records that for me have stood the test of time they they i just keep coming back to them i keep listening to them i keep checking them out they're just records that i find are awesome and You know, a lot of times on this podcast, on our blog, we talk about listening to jazz being the most important practice you can do for your jazz playing. If you're not listening to music all the time, you're not listening to jazz, you won't understand the language. So I thought to myself, well, that would be something great to do is just to, you know, tell you music that I like to listen to. And in hopes that actually I would hear from you what kind of music you like to listen to, what jazz artists and records you like to listen to, Uh, this is a community. So I will be incredibly interested in reading your comments. If you're on the website, you can leave a comment for us uh, below. So I'd, I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear what records you enjoy listening to. This is a community I think we can all share together. Um, and I'll just start by sharing mine. And, uh, you know, I hope that you find some great new jazz music to listen to. Now, these jazz records I'm going to recommend to you, you know, they're not necessarily, oh, these are incredibly important for jazz history. Everybody should listen to these. They're really pivotal. No, again, they're kind of my favorite jazz records, the one I always come back to. And and not all of the records are classic from like the 1950s or 1940s. Uh, some of them are, but I actually also included records from modern times, from the 90s and the 2000s, you know, you know newer artists. I really think it's important to listen to a large uh, widespread scale of, of the different periods of jazz to know where it's been and, and where it's going. So I have included some of those albums. And also I'll let you know that if you're on the website, I am recommending um, you know specific favorite songs from each album. And I'm going to have YouTube links to those songs in the notes, in the show notes. So be sure to check that out there. If you're not on the website, just go to learnjazzstandards.com. In the top menu, click podcast and find this episode number 17. All right, I'm going to go ahead and dive in and start listing off some of these records I hope you'll listen to. Okay, so the first record is Hank Mobley's Soul Station. Okay, saxophonist Hank Mobley. This is a really classic record. A lot of you may have listened to this, but for those of you who haven't, this is a must listen to album. So good, so classic, so much rich music in there. And this was recorded in 1960 for Blue Note Records. It's one of his most popular albums, Soul Station. It really is. It's a classic. Uh, and the personnel is Hank Mobley on saxophone, Winton Kelly on piano, Paul Chambers on bass, and Art Blakey on drums. Just a, an amazing album, rich, full of the blues. Uh, just full of great jazz language. And of course, if you're not familiar with Hank Mobley, he sounds so good. You got to check him out. All-star band. Uh, you know, my favorite song on this record, it's Remember. It's their version of Remember by Irving Berlin. Oh, it's such a great song. And the way they play it is is just so rich. Uh, so really check that out. Hank Mobley's solo is amazing on that song. So that's Soul Station by Hank Mobley. Go ahead and check that record out. Look that one up. Buy that one. Listen to it. Okay, the next record I want to recommend to you, uh, it's a personal favorite that I just used to always put on repeat all the time, and sometimes I still do, sometimes I still come back to it, and that's Cannonball and Coltrane. Okay, this was recorded in 1964, or was released 1964 on Limelight Records, and essentially this band is basically Miles Davis's band Minus Miles. I'm not entirely sure what the whole story was. I believe it was recorded in Chicago 
And I, it could be that Miles was just not available for the show for whatever reason, and so they just did it without him. Um, again, not entirely sure of the specifics on that, but it is essentially the Miles Davis's band minus Miles. And actually, shortly after this session, they recorded Kind of Blue in 1959. Okay, released 1964, but it was recorded before 1959. And obviously, we know that Kind of Blue is one of the most pivotal, most iconic records of all time and incredibly important to jazz. So it is kind of very interesting to listen to this record with that in mind, considering that Miles isn't there. So it kind of changes the mood. It changes the vibe considerably. But also just to keep in check that this is before that pivotal, uh, you know, iconic recording session of Kind of Blue. So it's just a great album. Uh, basically, the reason I like this album is I love Cannon Paul and Coltrane. I mean, both of them are just incredibly amazing saxophone players in their own styles, in their own right. And, and you know, I could, I've listened to their individual records all day, all the time. So having them together uh, and, and kind of shining in the spotlight is just, it's phenomenal. So this is a great record. And again, the personnel, um, if you're not familiar with Miles Davis's band, is John Coltrane on tenor saxophone, and then Cannonball Adderley on alto saxophone, Jimmy Cobb on drums, and Wynton Kelly on piano. Now, during the kind of blues sessions, Bill Evans played piano as well on those tracks. Okay, so my favorite track on this album is, it's just got to be Weaver of Dreams, that ballad Weaver of Dreams. And this is actually John Coltrane's feature. He, It's just John Coltrane playing, Cannonball sits out for this one. Oh, just the way he plays the melody to Weaver of Dreams is just heart-wrenching. Um, so, you know, great ballad. You got to listen to that. By the way, same chord changes as There Will Never Be Another You. Uh, I just think that it's in the key of Concert C, I believe. So, incredible record. Cannonball and Coltrane. Check that out if you've never done that. Now, this next record is another really good one. Again, I'm going to say that about every one because I love these. Uh, and that is Oliver Nelson's The Blues and the Abstract Truth. Really, really, really good album. And and the title kind of says it all. It's kind of a celebration of the blues, the blues form. Not all of the songs are, you know, a common 12-bar blues, but it kind of celebrates the mood and, and, and the aspects of it and kind of delves into it in their own kind of creative fashion. And it was recorded in 1961. It's really you know, Oliver Nelson's most acclaimed album. Uh, the personnel on that is Oliver Nelson on saxophones, uh, Eric Dolphy on the flute and the alto saxophone. So it's Eric Dolphy. You already know it's going to have some character to it. Uh, George Barrow on baritone sax, Freddie Hubbard on trumpet, uh, Paul Chambers on bass, and Roy Haynes on drums. So big time all-star lineup for this one. Now, it's it's really hard for me to pick which one is my favorite song because all of them are just pretty epic. They're pretty epic songs. Um, you know, the classic Stolen Moments is on here and other things. But I would have to say my favorite is Hoedown. It's a track called Hoedown. Oh, it's just so good. It's it's amazing. So check out that song. Again, I have that in the show notes. If you're on the website, you can check out uh, the YouTube video of that song. So, yeah, that's the blues and the abstract truth. Oliver Nelson. Be sure to check that out. Okay, so the next record, it's actually going more fast fasting, fast forwarding into modern times. And that is Kurt Rosenwinkel's Deep Song. Now I'm not sure who if you're familiar with Kurt Rosenwinkel or not. He's he's a jazz guitarist. He's really kind of one of the guys that has pushed the music forward in, in, in many ways. He kind of came to light in the 1990s. That's really kind of stepped up into the spotlight on the scene. And he just absolutely blows the world away with every record he comes out with. Incredible modern jazz, really amazing music. So if you're not familiar with Kurt Rosenwinkel, be sure to get familiar. He's just a great force to be reckoned with as far as jazz is concerned and, and moving the music forward. So this song, this album, Deep Song, it's, it's one of my favorite albums that he's come out with. Um, and it came out in 2005. And the personnel is Joshua Redman on sax, tenor sax, Brad Meldow on piano, Larry Grenadier on the bass, Jeff Ballard on drums, and Allie Jackson on drums, uh, you know, kind of sharing tracks 
So it's it's just a real again I already said it it's just a great modern jazz album and the compositions are amazing. Kurt Rosenwinkel is an incredible incredible composer. So this album really has a lot of that. It, it, it shares a lot of some of my favorite musicians. I'm a huge Brad Meldow fan. Uh, you'll find that out in a second. Um, so my favorite song on this is uh, it, it's actually the title song of another album he has. Uh, called the next step and in in his other album the next step he has this exact same song the title track in there but his version on on deep song on the album deep song is by far my favorite uh epic 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 song the next step so definitely check out that song check out that album Um, and I'm going to stay here in the modern for this next album. I just mentioned I'm a huge fan of pianist Brad Meldow. I love Brad Meldow. I love the, his rhythmic playing. Uh, I I just I love the way he approaches the instrument, the way he approaches the music. Um, I don't know. For, for me personally, he just kind of, you know, pulls the right strings for me. Um, and, and this is Brad Meldow's Art of the Trio 4. Now, if you're familiar with Brad Meldow... He has a lot of different Art of the Trio albums. They're all live albums. And this one is live at the Vanguard, like many of them are. It was recorded in 1999, so just bordering the 2000s. Um, and it's just a magical record, really good. You know, they do some covers of Radiohead. Uh, they do some classic jazz standards. Um, it, it's just a great album. So much feeling, so much emotion. Uh, and, and the trio is really iconic. The personnel is Brad Meldow, obviously, on piano, Larry Grenadier on bass, and Jorge Rossi on drums. Now, in Brad Meldow's trio, um, Jeff Ballard is now the drummer in his trio, but back then it was Jorge Rossi. My favorite track on this one has to be the, the standard I'll Be Seeing You. They play their version of I'll Be Seeing You. Um, I think it's partly just because I love that song, um, and then just the way Brad Meldow play it, plays it just kind of touches me in a very particular way. So, uh, yeah, that's my favorite track, I'll Be Seeing You. Okay, moving on to the next uh, album I'm going to recommend, and this is another classic, classic album. It's Sonny Rollins' The Bridge. Okay, so this was recorded in 1962 by Bluebird RCA Victor. This is actually his first record for them. Um, and it's also his first album after his early retirement. At one point in his career, he, um, you know, there's different, you know, versions of why he did this. Uh, maybe he just felt there was too much competition. He felt overwhelmed. Um, anyways, he took an early retirement. He basically stopped playing for about a year. Um, and what he would do is he would go out and practice on the Williamsburg Bridge in New York City and just sit out there and practice on the bridge. And he spent a lot of the year doing that. So he actually appropriately uh, titled his comeback album, The Bridge. Um, and this is just a phenomenal record. Uh, you have to listen to this one. It's just, again, it's a classic. Uh, and the personnel on this is uh, Sonny Rollins, of course, on saxophone. Uh, Jim Hall on guitar, replacing a piano player. Bob Cranshaw on bass. Ben Riley on the drums and and just just amazing how these this band plays together my favorite track is is actually the title track the bridge just a lot of energy i love the way jim hall and um sonny rollins play together and play off of each other just a great track so check out sonny rollins the bridge okay we are down to the last two albums i want to recommend today and the one I want to recommend is actually one that I became addicted to earlier on in, in my jazz discovery, and that is um, Stan Getz and Kenny Barron, People Time. And this is a duo album just between saxophonist Stan Getz and pianist Kenny Barron. It was recorded in 1992, and, or, or released in 1992, and it was actually Stan Getz's last recording before he died. It's pretty incredible to think about that. Um, again, it's just Kenny Barron, Stan Getz, and they're just playing duo. Uh, this is where I kind of fell in love with both of these musicians. They kind of work magically together. Uh, and in fact, I believe that Kenny Barron once said that, you know, playing with Stan Getz is kind of like their perfect musical marriage. Um, and 
just the way Kenny Barron accompanies and plays. I mean, he's just a master of the piano. And so that just shines through. Getz is obviously a master of, of the saxophone. But then they're just a master of playing together. So they just create some serious magic. I believe there's two, two CD sets on this album, uh, People Time. And my favorite track is East of the Sun, West of the Moon, their take on that song. Great, great song. And the way they played is amazing. And and honestly, the way Stan Getz plays the melody is just magical. So check that out. All right, the last album, the eighth album that I want to recommend to you. This is a cool one. Uh, I, actually, I actually got hip to this album from the bass player in Roy Hargrove's band, Amin Salim. Uh, I was chilling at his place one time, and he just turned on this album. And I was like, what is this? This is an amazing album. And he's like, wow, this is Max Roach's Members Don't Get Weary. Okay, this is an incredible album. It was recorded 1968 on Atlantic Records. Uh, the the uh, personnel is Max Roach, of course, on drums. Charles Tolliver on trumpet. Gary Bartz on alto saxophone. Stanley Cowell on piano. Jimmy Merritt on electric bass. And my favorite track on this one is called Absolutions. Uh, I love the bass line on this. This is it just grooves. And again, this is this is just a heavy album. It just incredibly powerful. Uh, just, you know, unrelenting, non-forgiving, <laughs> just throw it all out there on the table kind of an album. Uh, so just a lot of soul in this album. I really appreciate this album. Again, it's 1968, so uh, actually there's lots of roads and keys in here. So, you know, very forward-thinking album, very progressive album. So be sure to check out that album. That's Members Don't Get Weary by Max Roach. <laughs> Okay, that's all for our show today. I want to thank you for joining us. Thanks for listening. And now it's your turn. I want to hear from you. What are some of your favorite jazz albums? I'd love to fill up the comment section with some of your favorites. We can all share together, find out what each other is listening to. Remember, this is a community here on Learn Jazz Standards. That is what we're all about. So feel free. Let us know what are your favorite jazz albums and why. And remember, if you got any value at a day show, consider adding value back. Uh, You can leave us a donation by clicking the support button below if you're on the website. If you're not on the website, you can go to learnjazzstandards.com slash support and leave us a one-time or monthly donation there. Okay, we're going to be coming out with episode 18 next week. We hope to see you then. (laughs) 